Uh, we're going to dive right in, man, because there's a lot to cover. I'm sure you guys will have a lot of questions. I'm here to answer, so let's do this. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is this is your standard correlation chart. I think that's the one. I think uh, Labs was the first one to come out with this that was, I, I guess, popular or whatever. But you can find these charts anywhere. Just search D NFL DFS correlation chart or whatever. Um, this is the reason why we stack in football, right? This is the reason. It's, it's, it's plain and simple. A quarterback throws a touchdown. Uh, that's one play. Two of your players get points. Uh, very simple. And it happens... Uh, more than we like to think, right? Not just with touchdowns, with receptions. The quarterback gets yards. There's the PPR point for the receiver and the yards, yada, 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 right? We are going to create every single type of stack, right? Anything you guys have in mind, we're going to create it today. I will create it the right way because I think there's some wrong ways to create this. Uh, we will also be creating game stacks. So if you're interested in knowing how to you know, do this the right way. I will show you all of them. Go to advanced options, right? Advanced options is where we have all our stacking features from stacking to groups, to limits, to everything. And I'll touch it all. I, I am going over this tab specifically today. Uh, anyway, uh, head over to the wrong, wrong tab, position stacks. Um, and, and here's where, here's where it gets interesting. Again, if, if, if you caught yesterday's stream, read everything like a sentence. Um, some of, uh, some of you are going to ask, and this is more for the newer guys, which is understandable. This is probably your first, second, third, fourth time seeing this, so you're not really used to how this you know, tab works. But this tab, the two tabs you're going to be working on the most for NFL are the position stacks tab and then the groups tab. Read this like a sentence before you email support asking why your stacks don't work, right? Read everything from create new all the way to the add stacking rule button as a sentence, okay? Read this, stack QB, right? You're not stacking running back, you're not stacking wide receiver, you're not stacking tight end. Uh, stack QB with at least, could be exactly, could be at most, you can change it to whatever you want. I use at least, I'll explain to you why. Uh, and this actually does matter, this does matter. This does matter a lot, okay? This does matter a lot. Uh, I, I will go over every piece in a second, right? And I am just filling in from the information we have charted and from the information we have researched throughout the week, throughout the years, uh, throughout DFS, right? It's at least, I don't know who's going to, I don't know who's going to um, stack just one player. That's like 1999 DFS. Uh, two players, I think is okay. Uh, you want two players of, uh, you know, could be Tyreek, could be Travis Kelsey, could be Damian Williams, right? I think that's fair. So it could be any one of these guys, but it needs to choose at least two players of all these positions. Uh, and this is from the same team, right? I want the quarterback with the same team. I do not want opposing team. I don't want Patrick Mahomes with everyone from the other team. That doesn't make any sense. There's no correlation. Well, there is kind of, but you're going to need to do same team first before there's correlation with the other team, right? If you wanted to do this and only with the pass catchers, because you see that on this chart, running back is the lowest correlated out of wide receiver one, wide receiver two, and tight end, then you can do that, right? All I did was input these numbers into here that's what this means you would then click the add stacking rule right and when you create lineups it is going to create aaron Rodgers with equinemius st brown and Devonte adams and just like that it'll do everyone else right Devonte adams jimmy graham it'll fulfill this one because i put at least has three of them uh when you add randomness and for the sake of this let me add randomness so you can see this uh happening you can see that no matter who it chooses, uh, Mahomes, it'll use Chris Conley, Travis Kelsey. It's going to fulfill the sentence you have up there, right? That is your basic stack. That is how most people uh, in the DFS industry make their stacks. I am here to tell you that is that is very bad. As you can see, I pr if you were to make the lineups by hand, you would never put Equinemius St. Brown in an Aaron Rodgers lineup. That is just dumb. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, which is why Monday stream helps. Cue the disco ball. We're gonna get here. So, so I, I mentioned this is, and and don't worry, I won't get derailed. I have everything written down. I got you, family. Um, position stacks. I mentioned QB with at least two of wide receiver, running back, and tight end because I want those guys. What realistically happens, right? This is what realistically happens. R right here, perfect. This is this Ryan Fitzpatrick lineup, right? 
um, had Peyton Barber in there. By the way, Fitzpatrick did okay. 20. Chris Godwin had 20. I assume Mike Evans had a pretty decent game. Peyton Barber, on the other hand, had one target, one catch, five yards. Okay? So uh, I wouldn't want Peyton Barber in here because he doesn't catch uh, this number that you're seeing here. Well, he's a running back. It correlates at point whatever. That's a fraudulent number, which is why I told you to put an asterisk here. Because this isn't a Peyton Barber number. This is an Alvin Kamara, CMC, uh, who Tariq Cohen number. So, uh, although this is wrong, this is the setting you should leave here. Again, both of these tabs are combined together. And tomorrow we'll go over this tab to make you understand why this is correct, right? In case you want to continue learning all the stacks, uh, I showed you already which is the one I use. Um, I am going to continue. This could be three players. This could be four players. This could be as many players as you want. I would never advise same team, three players or four players, because then you have to play Chris Conley or something. Look what happens. And I'm just showing you because I know how an optimizer works. Works. You're going to get really bad players. It needs to make the best projected lineup. So it's almost always going to put really bad players in your pool uh, or in your stack, whatever, right? Jared Goff with... Brandon Cooks Gurley is great, but Gerald Everett, meh. Uh, Mitch Trubisky with Burton, Anthony Miller, Jordan Howard should never be in here, right? Just limit RB selected. Yes, no, that is incorrect because per perfect example. Um, I don't want to use Jordan Howard in the stack. I would much rather have Tariq Cohen in here because if I'm trying to pair Trubisky with his pass catchers, Cohen is the pass catcher, right? Not Jordan Howard. But do I want to eliminate Jordan Howard from the pool? No, because Jordan Howard can have 19 carries for 100 yards and two touchdowns. Pat Mahomes, you have Chris Conley in here. I would never stack him. For three, I think that's too much from the same team. Three starts getting interesting when this tab put same game, right? Now, if you were to do a game stack and game stacks are becoming more popular by the year, right? Look at what happens when you do this. couple things so so while it populates i'll tell you a couple things that happen um perfect example i don't have to go any further here this is perfect tom brady against the tennessee titans all four players or all yeah all four players that are in your stack are right here at the top look how wrong this is right because a couple things tom brady needs to be to a pass catcher if this was sunny michelle this is wrong because Sonny Michelle is not going to catch any passes. There's no correlation between him and Tom Brady. James White is okay. But the quarterback should always have priority in your stacks. Write that down, especially if you're doing game stacks. So it doesn't make sense for me to have Tom Brady as my quarterback and then play Deion Lewis and Corey Davis when I'm only having three pass catchers, pass catchers from this game. For that, I would stack Mariota because there's more people in here to pair with Mariota, right? So just because you have three here doesn't mean you're technically game stacking. These are bad game stacks. A game stack, and, and I guess this is perfect for me to label what a game stack is, and I'll go back to this chart, right? A game stack is, you guys get it, it, it it's quarterbacks with people from the same game. Um, but it has to be correlated, correlated. That wasn't really correlated, right? Deion Lewis, Derrick Henry, and Corey Davis with Tom Brady and James White doesn't make any sense. Um, what would make sense would be James White, Edelman, and Tom Brady with Corey Davis coming back. That makes sense. So, so picture it like this. And again, if you're fairly new to the whole game stacking thing, um, write this one down. A game stack is when a team scores a lot of points... And the team that is trailing has to play catch up and in turn passes the rest of the way, right? Passes the rest of the game. That's how you get those 42 to 38 games, right? They're extremely risky, right? These, this is the riskiest type of lineup you can make. But if you're playing tournaments, if the payout structures are going to be horrendous uh, and uh, it's only top 10 that's going to make a lot of that money, 
then you have to you have to be risky. You have to go and get that biscuit, 100%. Um, but do them correctly. There's a lot of ways to do this the wrong way. This is the wrong way to make a game stack. Um, it's, a, it's a good starting point. And if you don't have time, what I would suggest is, again, for you, for you nine to fivers, even on Sunday that don't have time, um, limit your player pool to where you have as little third string receivers as you can and as little non PPR dudes as you can. And then use this with a limit rule. I will also show you, right? So, uh, how do you feel about instead of at least one opponent, at least three from the same game? Are you kidding me? I need a water. One sec. I, I, I guess I'll just repeat myself in 10 seconds. Uh, you change this number to three from the same game. And it's sometimes going to give you, you know, three from the same team. Sometimes it'll give you two from the opposing team. Sometimes it'll give you all three from the opposing team. And it's not really a game stack, right? I don't want Patrick Mahomes with Larry Fitzgerald and Christian Kirk and David Johnson. That doesn't make any sense, right? So uh, you would like them to be from your team. Uh, rule of thumb, pro tip, the quarterback always has to have the most correlation in the lineup. He's the one with all the control in the game, right? Uh, again, so the best way to make a game stack, at least two players from the same team stack, at least one player from the opposing team stack. There's your game stack, right? Um, some of you mentioned, uh, Manny, do we eliminate the running backs that, you know, are our second string or whatever, whatever, whatever? Uh, no, I, I don't think you... Um, I don't think you eliminate anyone. So I don't, apart from limiting my player pool, I don't forcefully take anyone out that I don't want to play. Why are projections there for, right? The projections need to hold some value. So the limit rule, uh, and, and we have a separate tab inside our position stacks tab is, uh, our limit rule says we can, again, just reading it as a sentence, limit the number of whatever positions from same team or same game to X players unless they're paired with, you know, any other position. So, so this is imperative because sometimes uh, when we create this stack and say three players, right, from the same team, and, and I'll do two players from the same team, it's an optimizer, right? In the days of Drew Brees, uh, Ingram, and Alvin Kamara, uh, where they both went ham this week, this week, look, Ingram had 28. Alvin Kamara also had 26, right? If you have Drew Brees as your quarterback, there's a solid chance you can get Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram as your stack partners, right? This is totally possible. And it has happened a million times. Now, the reality of all of this is maybe once, twice a week, or twice a season, th three times, maybe three times a season when he wasn't suspended, this would work out. But for most other teams, this would never work out. So RB1, correlation with RB2. It's, it's just, it's common sense, right? It's common sense. This is just, this cannot happen. So RB1's correlation with RB2, almost zero. They're not correlated. You do not want them in the lineup at the same time. You'd go to the limit rule, that's just baked into projections. It's hard because there's some teams that that won't be, you know? Uh, so we go here and again, I'm just going to fill out the sentence. I want to limit the number of running backs from the same team to one player, right? One player. I do not want any more than one running back from the same team, right? I do not want more than one running back from the same team in a given lineup, right? Unless paired with, and you don't have to answer all the questions in this uh, or all the fill in the blanks in the in the in the sentence to to, to do this, right? You can unless paired with. You don't. Ha I don't answer this because I don't want them. At least unless paired with anyone, I don't want them to be there. 
Now what do we have? And remember at the bottom here, every single stack or every single lineup has to abide by these rules to be produced, right? So, so far we have stack QB with at least two running backs, whatever, from the same team. If you want game stacks, you would put one from the opposing team. There's your game stack. I also want to limit running backs from the same team to one player. I am just following what the chart tells me. Right? I'm just following what the chart tells me. Um, in this advanced options tab, when we create these rules, so these aren't your finished rules, by the way. This is where you should be if you've, I, I guess, have taken the time to learn all of this we've gone through so far. Uh, but this isn't the finished product yet, right? The finished product isn't finished until you know what to do with your running quarterbacks only. It's a reality that we are in a league where quarterbacks cannot pass or don't know how to pass accurately. Lamar Jackson is a thing. Josh Allen is a thing, or at least they were things last season, right? How do you handle, and this is a really big problem for everyone when it comes to rushing quarterbacks, right? So just because I set these parameters... Um, doesn't mean I don't want to play Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's still a guy that could give you 25 fantasy points, just he won't do it passing. He'll do it with 150 yards passing, right? How often do those guys bring tournaments? They actually do. They actually do. They, they can give you 30 fantasy points. They can give you 30 fantasy points. This is real. And everyone that's watching right now, if you played last season, and if you were somewhat up to this point and you were stacking every single lineup, I can guarantee you Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen were huge problems when making lineups. Look what happens. Uh, and I'm going to leave these. I'm going to leave. I'm going to do this exact same thing here, right? Um, Aaron Rodgers, you see here is at 22%. I'm going to use Aaron Rodgers for a second. Naked QB. I'm going to show you how to make a naked QB on this specific screen, right? I'm going to show you how to make a QB on this screen. A naked QB on this screen. So I'm going to delete these because these are wrong. The limit running back is still okay. How this works is you have a QB with at least two players uh, from the, the same team, right? Again, continue reading the sentence. Option for this rule, you can put exclude or include players from the following teams and here you'll be able to pick your teams right so how i want this to work is stack a qb with at least two players of all these positions from the same team except or exclude players from baltimore or whoever in this case since we're doing green bay i'll do green bay what this does is every lineup will follow this rule unless it's using the green bay players and it doesn't mean it's not going to use Green Bay players. It just means Green Bay doesn't have to follow this rule. You guys will see the problem because we've done two crunches with the same exact settings, uh, except one just has a naked Aaron Rodgers. One has Aaron Rodgers at 22%. The other one has a more than double, right? More than double. I, I show you everything because you're all going to try it. I'm just going to save you time. I'm just going to save you time. Aaron Rodgers is the naked QB in our example. And all of a sudden, now he comes up 53% of the time. Remember when I told you yesterday, uh, anytime you have a quarterback at like 50, 60, 70 in your lineups, something is wrong. Something you're doing is wrong. The optimizer is never going to be wrong. You are going to be wrong, right? Something is wrong with this, with this, with this crunch here. Um, What's wrong is you don't have to stack Aaron Rodgers with anyone, meaning the optimizer can just play the best available players to up its projection at every other position. So how it works is an optimizer is just trying to optimize for the highest projected points while staying within your constraints. Since there is basically no constraints using Aaron Rodgers, it could create lineups that have really high projected totals or high projected fantasy points, right? So it's going to create more of Aaron Rodgers, which is wrong because just because I have Mariota having to be stacked with two players doesn't mean he's any less viable than Aaron Rodgers, right? Just Aaron Rodgers doesn't have groups uh, or, or, or stacks. Um, I'm going to leave you with 
the best way or, or I'm going to leave you with this. Again, it, it depends on what you want to run specifically, right? You want to run five man game stacks, six man game stacks, four man game stacks. You want to run three man team stacks only. It all depends on you. These are the final. These are the final ways you should be making all your stacks, right? And I am going to take this off. I'm going to make it for your wide receiver one stack. And I'm only going to do this page. I know groups tomorrow ties in directly to this. So this will finish all your lineups. This is where you start all your lineups. If you want to write down at the very end of, of your little sheet or whatever you're going to make or notes or whatever it is, uh, here's the final answer. So, uh, do you want to be a millionaire? Is that your final answer? Here are the final answers for all the questions. How to make a one person stack, which none of you should be making is this, but don't, don't make this. I'm not even going to show you this. Don't do this. Uh, two players should be a minimum. Uh, we're in 2019. You want to go, go in, baby, go in. Um, QB with at least two players of again, WR tight end, uh, RB from the same team. That's your regular three man team stack. That is exactly how I would do it. So this is correct if you wanted to do that. Problem is I don't play this ever. So do it at your own risk. Um, game stacks. I'd start by doing this and then I'd change this to one from opposing team. Same game can get a little tricky because of what we mentioned earlier. Uh, this is also correct. Again, if you wanted naked quarterbacks, you would just go in here, exclude uh, whoever a naked quarterback would be and then you add the stacking rule this way, it's going to add the same sentence, except not stack Tampa Bay game stacks. I already showed you, you have it this way. Um, the limit rule is something you guys cannot forget because it's going to help you make much better lineups, uh, limit the number of running backs from the same team to one player. You can leave everything else blank unless you want to exclude a freaking disco ball. Uh, New Orleans because Alvin Kamara and Ingram are a thing this week if you read Scott Barrett's article or something. I don't know.